You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast on the IoT for All Media Network. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon, one of the co-creators of IoT for All. Now, before we jump into this episode, please don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or join our newsletter at iotforall.com slash newsletter to catch all the newest episodes as soon as they come out. So without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome, Kenta, to the IoT for All podcast. How are things going on your end? Yeah. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. You know, we've been having exciting uh, customer case studies and everything is going really well. Fantastic. Well, let's start off by giving a quick introduction uh, about yourself to our audience. Tell them anything you think would be you know, relevant. Talk a little bit about your background, which I know is quite interesting and kind of how you, know, you got involved in, in co-founding Sorcom and kind of just, just that whole journey. Yeah, sure. So I, I'm CTO and co-founder of the company Soracom. So uh, I actually started my career as a researcher at Ericsson. I was uh, involved in connected home, connected car type uh, research projects. And I really enjoyed it. You know, the I had an opportunity to work with various sensors and actuators and also uh, connecting uh, home entertainment systems to a network so that uh, we can actually demonstrate what we can do by connecting all these different uh, devices. One thing that I uh, realized is that when I built the system, I was always uh, drawing a fluffy cloud in the middle of the diagram uh, <laughs> saying, you know, all the magic happened here. So the, you know, the, the by connecting devices, we can actually achieve uh, the, you know, a better world uh, and better connected life. But, uh, you know, I was not really sure what is going on in the cloud side. So I wanted to know more about what cloud technology can offer to this connected life. So I joined uh, Amazon Web Services, AWS, as a solutions architect back in uh, 2012. And I worked as a solutions architect and I uh, worked with various companies. I st- at the time, I was based in Japan, Tokyo. So I worked with various startups and enterprise companies in Japan. And I realized that the, uh, the cloud technology can uh, build any kind of systems in a better way. And I also had mm-hmm. a chance to uh, move to Seattle and join the uh, develop- development team in Seattle. And that also uh, made me believe in that the, the cloud can actually uh, transform any system uh, in a more scalable uh, system. And I chatted up that idea with uh, one of the co-founders of uh, mine, uh, Ken, our CEO, CEO uh, at one night. And we talked about building a connectivity platform on top of cloud. And actually, the Soracom is my dream project. Actually, I've been kind of uh, joining all these experiences and <laughs> knowledge and connections uh, to build a connectivity platform on top of cloud. So that's me. Personally, I'm super excited about the connected gadgets and connected devices. Like what my my late latest project is to connect my car to Silicon platform so that we can data from my car <laughs> and show that on dashboard. That's very cool. Very cool. So let's um you kind of you know loosely touched on what Soracom is, but if you were to describe Soracom in like a couple sentences to our audience, who is, you know, what, what does Soracom do and kind of what is your offering to the market? Yeah, so we have offered the uh, connectivity platform that is designed specifically for the needs of connected devices and deployments. So from the cloud to edge, uh, Soracom helps IoT projects launch fast and scale fast with affordable global coverage, advanced cloud integrations, and built-in network management. So uh, we have now mm-hmm. supported millions of connections for thousands of customers worldwide uh, from all these st- stage okay. startups to global enterprises. Very cool. And do you have, do you have like a target kind of audience? Like, are you focused more on, it sounds like more enterprise focus. Is that kind of the, the area? Do you have any industries or verticals that you all are, you know, kind of playing? Yeah, we have actually offered a horizontal platform that can be uh, generic for uh, any kind of industry or any size companies. So the, uh, we have been offering this uh, platform as a kind of a self-service platform. Like cloud services, anybody can sign up and purchase a SIM card and start building a system. But the, uh, you know, once they have the uh, proof of concept ready, they go to scale. We can totally support the uh, enterprise scale uh, deployment uh, with using the same platform. So we have, uh, 
you know, uh, small and medium sized businesses, startups and large enterprises and all these different kinds of customers in our portfolio. Fantastic. Now, one of our objectives at IoT for All from the beginning when we started it was to really help people on their IoT journey. Um, and it seems as from what my understanding of kind of your overall goals and mission of the company, it's very closely tied to that same idea. So helping kind of basically IoT solutions, IoT development succeed. Uh, in order to increase kind of the adoption and ease of use across IoT um, development projects. So I wanted to just get a, 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 a more detailed understanding of how you all are really helping companies succeed in IoT. Not necessarily just about the offerings, which we kind of already alluded to, but more specifically, um, you know, kind of the target focus for you all when it comes to playing a key role in helping organizations succeed on their IoT journey. Yeah, exactly. The, the supporting the journey, you know, the organizations through the journey is exactly what we are doing. So the, uh, you know, you know, often the, when you have an idea, the first thing to do is to uh, make a plot type. So, uh, the, our users can just sign up on our website and the, uh, you can, they can just purchase a SIM and start to put that into, uh, you know, often people start with Raspberry Pi or some Arduino device and, uh, with our SIM in the device and connect to the network. And the first thing they uh, encounter is they need to have a way to uh, enable cellular modem on Raspberry Pi, for example. So we have a, uh, okay. uh, we just uh, recently launched a Suracom Onyx USB dongle that can be a starting point for connected device. And then once the device is connected, the next step is to, you know, uh, uh, send data from the device and make sure, you know, uh, they are getting right set of data. And we, for that, we have a service called Suracom Harvest. We write a few lines of code that sends data to Suracom endpoint. And we can actually uh, store the data uh, with set specifying it's setting the device ID and tags to the each data point and visualize data on the dashboard. So by using that support, that service, the, the people can make sure they are getting right set of data from those IO connected devices and uh, can move on to the next step to uh, write the logic on the cloud side. And, you know, once the, uh, the users have uh, realized that they have, they can um, build this system, uh, the prototype works. They can now go into uh, cloud side logic. And for that, we have uh, various services to help build the uh, secure private networking for devices and uh, the cloud servers so that they can make sure uh, secure deployment in the production grade uh, systems as well. So we have all the uh, services and uh, uh, features to help all the journey of the customer. Let's let's bring this off full, full circle here for a second for our audience and talk about any particular use cases you feel comfortable sharing. Because one of the goals of this show is to really bring to light not just solutions that are available for companies that are not in the IoT space to purchase by working with IoT companies, but also kind of just just you know, connecting that entire journey for, for a potential IoT adopter. So are there any specific um, solutions that you have out in the market that are connect, you know, that are being used by organizations that you can talk more about in detail about how it's solving a real world problem? Um, just to kind of put some something, you know, kind of concrete to everything we've been talking about. Yes, sure. Yeah, we have a customer who has built the uh, pocket translator that is connected by using our Solacom SIM card uh, in the worldwide uh, coverage. So they can actually uh, use that translator. So you can just talk to the translator and it speaks out in different language. Um, the, it has been uh, helping the people communicating with, for example, doctors and the uh, the uh, professionals when they need a, a translation. Uh, that is one use case. And we have a, a, a Seattle-based customer called Pebblebee who has just uh, rolled out a new generation of pet and family tracker that combines long-range capability of cellular with 12-month battery life. The, uh, they have been using LTE CAT M1 and EDRX to make sure uh, the battery life and also the uh, long-range connectivity of cellular. Um, we also have uh, uh, the different uh, customers in different verticals. One of them is would be uh, to mention would be uh, 
most experienced architect providers called Hotel, uh, they have migrated their entire IoT architecture uh, to AWS from an on-premise system by leveraging Suracom's private networking capabilities uh, on top of AWS cloud. That's, that's great. And when, when you work with customers, um, and this may not be necessarily obviously in from, from the CTO office perspective, but just generally as a company approach, are you all working and partnering with other organizations that handle other parts of the IoT solution? Or are you all trying to keep most of that development and work in-house when you're working with a you know with customer directly? Yeah, we have uh, worked with customers directly. So when the customer has the their tech team, CTOs and their uh, engineers, we have our solutions architect team who has uh, provided guidance and architecture guidelines for building secure, uh, scalable uh, connectivity platform, the IoT architecture. Um, we have two, we, our services are like uh, building blocks. So the, uh, depending okay. on the use case that the customer has, the, so our solutions architecture, so our architect team can actually support and help uh, find the right set of services to build the architecture for them. Fantastic. Great. Well, I, I appreciate kind of all this background understanding of, you know, Sorcom, what you all do, how you work with customers, your offerings in the market and all that good stuff. So I want to pivot just slightly and talk about some more broad range topics, if that's all right. Um, so, so from a trend perspective, like talking more about trends we're seeing in the industry, we've seen a rapid um, democratization of IoT capabilities, which on one hand, I think we can argue is a good thing. but um, but on the other, it's really leading to, it seems like a new wave of connected hardware that isn't really designed or kind of shouldn't be designed necessarily for IoT use cases. Can you talk a little bit about what um, IoT kind of democratization is and how you see it playing a role either positively or negatively um, in the growth of the IoT space? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, you know, personally super excited about, you know, there have been so many connected devices and connected uh, products uh, in the world. But at the same time, uh, you know, a little concern is, you know, some devices are not well uh, designed for the uh, IoT security. And, you know, we may, ha we have heard the news about some uh, camera devices were hacked and, you know, some uh, video was leaked. Like right. that, and the, definitely the devices need to be uh, properly architected and uh, securely imp implement secure security, so that that kind of issue won't happen in the future. But at the same mm -hmm. time, you know, it's harder to predict all these challenges in the device uh, from the beginning and make sure the design can cover, you know, like uh, tens of years uh, from now on. So uh, there needs to be a, a there is a play that uh, we can uh, do at the middle, uh, at the, at the, as a connectivity provider in the middle that can connect connected devices to the cloud. So we can actually provide a smart uh, connectivity that can make sure the uh, connection between devices and the backend servers are secure and private. And we have mm -hmm. provided the feature to uh, authenticate each device by using. Uh, our connectivity sim and we use that for provisioning secure credentials to the devices and so on. So, uh, there are so many, you know, common challenges and undifferentiated heavy liftings in IoT development, but uh, we can actually take care of all these common parts so that the uh, people can focus on secure, uh, IoT devices. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's great. I, I I think it's interesting to think about you know the the large selection of hardware being out there. The approach companies take when they're trying to start this IoT journey, if you will, and kind of going off the shelf, pulling in different hardware, but not necessarily having the knowledge or experience to choose the right hardware for the in particular solution that they're developing and what kind of frustrations that can lead to, to kind of skew their view of the value of IOT. Yeah, that's true. So one example that I can give is, you know, the people can actually choose some off the shelf hardware to get started on, uh, IOT development. And, you know, uh, sometimes the devices are, uh, hard coded with like a, you, uh, easy username and password. And mm -hmm. if it exposes 
the uh, public internet, you know, it can be hacked in a short period of time and it can actually cause issues. So right. uh, by using our SIM card, our connectivity platform, for example, uh, they can actually uh, connect to the network uh, in a secure way. So we have a built-in firewall that protects devices from the uh, public internet. And, but you know, let's say, let's talk about surveillance uh, camera, for example. In that case, the user may uh, need to remotely access the device. So th there is always trade-off between security and the uh, um, remote access. Yeah. We have a, a solution to overcome this challenge. So the, we have a service called Suracom Napta that user can actually select a SIM or device and enable um, on ephemeral port to access the device for a specific period of time from a specific IP address. So the user can easily uh, create a secure link from their client device, client web laptop or client device to their remote device by using our smart connectivity. So by offering these, you know, uh, the security features at the middle, we believe, you know, um, any de devices that users choose can be used in a secure IoT system development. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Um, as it kind of relates to the democratization of IoT, I think it, it leaves a lot of organizations with many choices, not just in hardware, but also in connectivity, in the platform they use, the cloud service they use, you know, kind of across the board, all components of an IoT solution can be, there can be a lot of choices and a lot of tough decisions that companies that, you know, are not experienced in IoT have to make. Um, you know, I've talked to some guests who internally, their focus is to provide every component of an IoT solution in-house and not work with partners. And then the other side is that IoT is an I a partner-driven ecosystem. So we must work with partners. Not everybody can be an expert in everything, which I think is the more common approach that I kind of lean towards as being the right path. Um, but I wanted to ask you about kind of just your overall advice that you have for organizations getting started on this IoT journey and understanding how there really isn't a single solution or company that can address all of the challenges the company is facing and how it's important for companies in the IoT space and for companies that are looking to work with those companies to understand that finding a company that is flexible to build a solution and to tailor their offerings kind of basically just how you do in building blocks that can then be pieced together to fit their direct and exact need versus the other approach, which would be more the company, the non IOT company that's looking for a solution, having to tailor or adjust their business to fit this vertical specific solution. If you could talk to kind of just the general approach on why one is better than the other um, for our listeners out there to understand what they should be thinking when they're you know getting started and looking for a company that really gets this partnership side of our centric ecosystem plus why building blocks are more important than this turnkey solution that is you know not flexible and and why their individual business is requires probably something specific because the use cases are all almost independent of each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are definitely uh, uh, on the side of the ecosystem type approach. So when it comes to uh, IoT, there is no one single solution that, you know, company organization can that, you know, address the, uh, the, all the challenges that people are having. So the, uh, um, I get yeah. rather concerned when I hear, you know, this is the killer solution for everything or you know, th this technology is better than the others and things like that. Um, you know, for each vertical, or each use case, there needs to be uh, tailored solutions. And we are not uh, able to offer, you know, tailored solutions for ev each and every vertical. That's why we need to work with our partners and customers to solve all these uh, challenges in IoT. The, uh, and we, that's another reason why we offer uh, building blocks so that the customers can pick and choose uh, for building the right IoT architecture for each, act, each use case. The, um, so we often say uh, IoT is a team sport. So uh, for each, uh, you know, each company has a different role. And in order to uh, offer a solution to a particular problem, we 
all need to work uh, as a team. We provide uh, 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 connectivity and uh, features to uh, re- securely connect devices to cloud. And customers definitely should leverage the uh, cloud services like uh, AWS and Google and Microsoft offer to build the secure IoT infrastructure. And of course, there needs to be a, a device partner who can actually provide the right set of hardware for the use customers' use cases. So, you know, as an ecosystem, we can actually offer the uh, solution f- to, for the uh, particular challenge. Yeah, I think, do you, do you recommend companies kind of starting with one component of the IoT solution to kind of start their journey? Like, for instance, my experience has been if, let's say, I'm a IoT company or a company looking to get involved in an IoT in an IoT solution in some capacity, you know, for my organization or my customers. If I go online and start searching around, you know, for use cases and stuff, there's a chance I could wind up on the, you know, a hardware manufacturers page, a connectivity companies page, a systems integrators page, a platform, you know, c- companies page. And do you recommend starting at one component or the other, or is it kind of is it more about Whichever one, you know, whichever company you end up on, making sure that they have a healthy partner ecosystem, they have kind of a building blocks approach similar to, to you, you all have at SORCOM, and they understand the need for uh, matching specific components to the individual use case and not trying to do this, you know, kind of one size fits all approach. Yeah, so you know, it's uh, when it comes to IoT, one important thing is to actually the connection point to the real world. That is usually a device. So uh, it's important to start with the uh, device side uh, to you know make sure the right set of hardware is available for the particular use case, and then uh, they can think of uh, you know the uh, how to. Uh, process the data coming in from the device and how to react to it. And that's when uh, you know, they should think about uh, which kind of uh, uh, cloud services or machine learning logics to be applied for the use case. So the uh, I usually recommend to start with the uh, prototype uh, and proof of concept uh, that would uh, actually use the actual hardware and the simple uh, cloud side logic uh, to make sure that everything works as expected. And then uh, start to think about scaled uh, deployment uh, to the large scale. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think this, you know, kind of crawl, walk, run approach when it comes to IoT solutions, especially because those pilots really do a great job at showing the, the value and ensuring that you have the right partners, you have the right components, you know, everything is there from an ROI perspective for that company that oftentimes doesn't have enough knowledge about what IoT, the IoT components and how they work, that they're trusting organizations like SORCOM and others to provide them a solution that hits on all of their, their, key, their key value points and returns them um, or gives them a decent return on their investments. So, um, so I, I totally agree. I, th- I think that that's the absolute right approach. So, so I appreciate those insights and kind of sharing that with us. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. The, uh, you know, in order to, um, accelerate the, uh, hardware choice, you know, hardware selection, uh, we actually started to offer several, uh, hardware products as well. We are not, you know, hardware vendor and we are not trying right. to, uh, sell more hardware to make revenue out of it. We are rather doing it for, uh, you know, accelerating the, uh, this prototype phase and, you know, proof of concept stage so that the customers can actually, uh, get started early and get, um, you know, right, uh, solution, uh, as early as possible. One example is, you know, I talked about Suracomodix dongle that can be used for Raspberry Pis. We also started to, uh, uh, offer uh, what we an edge device called the, the Suracom S Plus camera that includes Raspberry Pi, a camera, a cellular modem, and built-in machine learning capability. This is rather for uh, people who want to do a machine learning based computer vision analysis easily. You know, if if you think about doing that, implementing that kind of prototype, you need to think about a lot of things like uh, what kind of device to choose, uh, what kind of camera or modem to choose. So we have have actually uh, built it so that the, and also it's pre-configured to connect to Soracom platform. So the user can just uh, uh, plug into uh, outlet, power outlet, and they can just uh, um, start to deploy a machine learning model to the device uh, just by clicking around on our web console and get started on simple uh, machine learning 
algorithm and process. And then uh, when they are uh, comfortable about the prototype, they can actually move on to production phase. Uh, so we have a, a path for that as well. Fantastic. Yeah, I think anything companies can do these days, regardless of which piece of the IoT solution they're involved in, to get companies up and running into the pilot phase to start to see the value and build that trust with the organization that they're working with on that pilot project, uh, the better. And I think companies should be focusing a lot of their efforts on getting that process started because once you get it started there's you know there's a, a decent relationship already developed at that point there's buy-in from the company there's something they can actually show and that's you know kind of the the recipe for for getting to scale more quickly so um so i totally agree with you um but but as we kind of wrap up here i wanted to ask you two quick questions just um one of them is uh related to Anything new and exciting kind of going on over at Soricom that either, you know, is coming out soon or we should be on the lookout for in 2021? Yeah, we have a lot of exciting items coming up. Uh, but uh, for the uh, in incoming, the, in the short period of time, we are uh, working on a new feature called uh, this, the new, new feature for packet inspection. So we... We launched a service called Silicon Peak in the last year that actually enables the customers to uh, peek into what the devices are send and receive, sending and receiving. Uh, mm -hmm. We are now working on to uh, make it even easier for the customers to uh, do that. So uh, once we launch this new feature, the customers will be able to just, uh, uh, select the device or SIM on our web console and right click on it and uh, enable um, the packet capture session, and then uh, okay. they can actually look into uh, actual device uh, packets by to to troubleshoot or understand why the uh, the devices are using more data than expected, and so on. This is one of the features that uh, we uh, developed based on the customers' feedback. The, they were saying, you know, they see some. Uh, an unexpected amount of data, or you know, uh, sometimes the the data device is not connected, connecting to the server and they want to troubleshoot, but they previously, they didn't have an insight about the communication between servers and devices. Now we have uh, made it easier for the customers to get started on this. Uh, likewise, we all these features that we built are based on customers' feedback. So when it comes to launching a new service or feature, we work backward from the customer. So uh, mm -hmm. all these features, that we have built on top of Soracom platform um, and battle tested with the customer deployments and customer feedback. So uh, right. often we talk with customers, they get surprised. Hey, you guys already have this feature. That's something I started to realize we needed uh, like, a, like yesterday. So yeah. we are happy to share more of these, you know, uh, features and case studies, uh, that we have learned uh, with our customers so that, you know, uh, people can actually, uh, when they have an issue in IOT development, they can actually uh, get an answer quickly and, uh, um, keep working on, uh, to, um, build the, make, make the innovation happen. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love the, 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 the way you said that as the approach of kind of working from the customer backwards. I think that's really important, um, approach versus working from the technology forward, which is oftentimes the case. So, so I, I'm totally on board with that. And the last question I have is if our audience out there, anybody has questions, follow up, anything they're looking to kind of just expand on from this conversation, what's the best way to either connect with you directly or get in touch with a member of the SORCOM team? Yeah, so I'm available on uh, all major social media, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and okay. Facebook. Um, I, I can share my uh, links to it. Uh, and also, uh, my team mm -hmm. is uh, uh, also available on uh, through our website or you know our social channels. If you go to www.saracom.io, uh, we we have all these uh, all our customers' case studies and product details and so on. And also, we have a, a live chat uh, available, so they can you know uh, if you have any questions on that, uh, they can definitely they can ask anytime. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Kendra, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk. Um, we've obviously been, you know, fans of SORCOM for, for a long time and, uh, it's glad to, it's to, we're glad to finally have, have, have you on the show and talk more in detail what you all are doing. And I think our audience is going to truly appreciate it. So, so thanks again. 
Thank you so much for having me. I, I was so uh, happy uh, joining on this <laughs> great show. Um, yeah, it's been great. All right, everyone. Thanks again for joining us this week on the IoT for All podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please leave us a rating or review and be sure to subscribe to our podcast on whichever platform you're listening to us on. Also, if you have a guest you'd like to see on the show, please drop us a note at ryan.iotforall.com and we'll do everything we can to get them as a featured guest. Other than that, thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time.